Um, what we're going to talk about today is a brand new instrument course that we uh, have at King Schools, and uh, Martha's going to give us some detail there. We're going to talk about a, a great new agreement we have with AOPA that will benefit uh, drone pilots specifically. Um, we're going to talk about a new on-camera instructor for King Schools, which is obviously something brand new for uh, King Schools in its uh, 45 years of existence. He's a real young guy. It, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that one secret for right now, but not for long. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, something that we're really, really proud of, and, and that is our 2019 NAFI Scholarship winner. And, uh, and you'll have a chance to meet her here today, and, uh, and we're just we're thrilled about the selection. And then I'll come back and I'll give you a little bit of information about where we're headed in the future for King Schools. So, and of course, a chance to ask some questions as well. So to kick it off, uh, Martha's going to tell us I about. I think I am, Martha. Well, you are. John's yeah. going to tell yeah, us about. Yeah, I'm going to tackle her and get in there. Okay. Uh, well, go uh, ahead, John. It's all yours. Uh, one of the things that we do, and it's awful hard to explain that we have a new course because what we do is video by video, uh, we keep all of our courses up to date. So if some aspect of one of our courses. Uh, is outmoded because the EFA changed the regulation or something like that. We change that, but it will be like eight minutes of video. And so we've been doing that. And so by calling this a new instrument ground school and test prep course, what that means is we have just now replaced within the last year or so every single the last year every single bit of video. And 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 it's it's now HD video or high definition video. Uh, and Martha and I are a lot older, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and we've got new, you know, graphics are better, animations are better, the the, the movements are better, but it's much flashier and fancier. But we're still as hokey as we've always been. Um, <laughs> but and, John, there's more. <laughs> but our deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's Martha's contribution. <laughs> and, 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 our, and our deal is once you buy one of our courses, you have lifetime access, access to that course. You gain access to that course anytime you want to, all the time. And also, uh, we promise, our promise is uh, that we're always going to keep that course current. So let's assume you've been away from your instrument course and you come back to your instrument course. Um, when you come back to it, there will be a, a notice that comes and says, since you have been on this course, these things have changed. Would you like to look at them now or save them for looking at later? So it, 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 once you have one of our courses, it is, we, our guarantee is it will always be up to date. Um, so we've had an internal battle in our company. Uh, some people have wanted to call it, call it the 2019 course. And, and John and Martha said, you can't call it a 2019 course, it's always current. It's just, so we don't do them by year, we don't do this year's course, next year's course. But what we just finally did is accomplish uh, changing every inch of video in the course. It doesn't come in inches, it comes in electrons. It used to come in inches. <laughs> Back when it was VHS yeah, tape. But yeah. John, there's more. <laughs> uh, so let me throw a little bit in here. The fact that, that it's all new video and course material in the last 12 months means that we had the opportunity to, to incorporate, first of all, the use of GPS for IFR in route navigation and approaches and, and arrivals and departures all through the course uh, as an, an integral part of it rather than a, well, the FAA is now asking this about an RNAV arrival, so we need to uh, stick something into the arrival segment and, and see where we can put it best. So starting from scratch on the, uh, on, on the lesson uh, plan, we could just do it the way it, it needs to be done, which is GPS is the primary means of navigation, but by the way, the FAA also wants you to know about uh, VORs uh, and, and ILSs uh, because they're going to be our backups for a long time coming in the future, but our, our focus is really on GPS and we incorporated that all the way through. And the course also um, took a, a good hard look 
at the uh, Instrument Rating Airman Certification Standards, the ACS, and because of the way the FAA has gone into the Airman Certification Standards and implemented it, the questions that they ask are no longer stupid, ridiculous questions that you just memorize and answer and move on. Things uh, that they used to ask would be things like, um, and, and these are gone, think of the FAA uh, find it up wise, uh, how many satellites are there in the GPS system? And the answer is, as many as you need, and who cares? <laughs> because your equipment will tell you whether you have enough satellites out there, and multiple flight planning programs will look at the geometry of the satellites relative to your proposed flight in time and tell you if you're going to have enough satellites. So it, it's an irrelevant question. Or what's the height of blowing dust? 75 feet, 85 feet, 105 they, feet? They really ask questions like that. I, they used to. They yeah, used yeah. to. So by the FAA getting rid of that kind of stuff and engaging more intelligently with the aviation community and the concept of risk management, we can now focus much more on things that really matter to a pilot becoming a real pilot in command with a good situational awareness and the habit of uh, identifying, evaluating, and mitigating risk. So all through the instrument course as we uh, prepared it over the last 12 months, we said we want to make sure that in addition to covering the FAA topic, whether or not the FAA puts it in terms of risk management, we want to put it in terms of risk management because that's what learning pilots need, whether it's at the private level, instrument level, or or uh, next up for us will be the commercial level. So uh, we have incorporated risk management uh, discussions through all of the, um, uh, the course, and um, uh, we think it will be very beneficial, uh, particularly in the instrument, because there's a lot of interesting issues for instrument pilots on risk management. So I thought I was going to be covering this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't. Don't, don't go away yet. Don't go away yet. <laughs> um, well, you can take a King course um, on any device that can connect to the internet. If you can take it, uh, if you if you have a cell phone that connects to the internet, an iPad, a computer. So any device that is connected to the inter internet, you can take a King course on. But if you don't want to stay, you want to say you're going to ride on an airline or uh, you're going to be out of internet uh, access, what you can do is download the entire course of what we call the King Companion app that comes along with your course at no charge. And, and, and then you can play the course on your uh, iPad or any iOS device. I, and later on, we're going to get all, all devices, any tablet. But now it's on an iOS device. And, and then uh, uh, it'll keep track of your progress. And so the, you took this question, you're this far along, you've played this video, and it keeps track of all of that. The next time you have a connection to the internet, it will then load your progress back to our servers. And so that you'll, it'll always keep up to date with you as of the last time it connected. And, and then, of course, all of that time, if anything has changed, you'll get a, a notice that says these things have changed. So we're trying to, trying to keep you up to date and give you uh, a great customer experience and trying to give you access. So, and as, as an interesting observation, I made this observation this morning in one of our talks. Um, uh, years ago, Martha and I generally uh, always had someone who headed up the operations of the company. Uh, it's whether it's been a, a president or a CEO, current CEO is very good um, But our, the, At first, our president, was Dave Jackson, was a producer and director in Hollywood. And we were at that time, had just gone into the video business and saw ourselves as being in a video business. So when we hire someone to run the country, we run a Hollywood producer director. He ran TV shows, and did feature films, and so on. He's a Hollywood producer director. And, and an avid pilot. Yeah. And an avid pilot. Barry, who is now an avid pilot, 
uh, as CEO of the company, his background is software. Uh, producing and creating software and managing it, managing the complexities of it, because we now see ourselves more in the electrons business uh, than in the video business. We're, we're delivering electrons. And software is a powerful, powerful tool for making life easier for people. I, I, uh, uh, one of my lines is the purpose of, of software is to make us more human. It's to, it's to let us use our capabilities better, let us learn better, let us remember better, let us make decisions better. And so that's what uh, we think we're doing, is trying to serve up this learning in a fun, playful sort of way. The whole purpose of all of this software is to make us more human and make our lives more human. And, and that's what we're trying to do now. Um, so we have the companion app, uh, and you can be either online or offline, and, and we're just trying to, to, to make everything easier from a personal standpoint. What did I leave off, Barry? Well, I, I would just say on the companion app that, that it's true that that's been our goal, and it's been a quite successful uh, goal. We feel like we've reached it, although there's always more to do when it comes to software and, and ways to make it easier. Uh, we're finding that the majority of our customers really prefer to use an iOS device to take our course. Uh, because when you download the video, it's uh, it's there, it's resident on your machine, you know you're going to have access to it at any time, as well as the questions that follow each of our lessons. So the, the way every King Schools course is structured is you watch a video and then you take questions which cause you to think about the material that you've just watched and make sure that you've understood it. And if you find that you're having a hard time with the questions, you can go back and watch the video. Doing that on an iOS device is a very seamless operation. Uh, when you're doing it on the web, you know, like all web sites, it takes a little bit to go from page to page and what have you. But when you use the, the companion app and you have everything downloaded and resonant, it's just, it's like that. And so we're finding that the, the majority of our customers are downloading and using the companion app. And that's kind of informing our future roadmap of where we're headed with the product. And we're, we're working currently on ways to extend out that companion app idea beyond iOS, as John mentioned. We're, we'll have uh, apps in the future that run on Android and, and run on whatever other types of operating systems you have on, on the current devices. So just to, just to mention that a little bit more about the companion app and, and note that it's, it's a very important part of our current strategy, but also our future uh, as King Schools. And, and we'll be developing more and more uh, software around that idea of being able to take your learning with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be tied to the internet. Uh, Barry, I need to give you some feedback. There's some other people listening in, but I'll tell you the feedback. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, in, in our presentation, somebody afterwards put up his hand and he says, I used to like to be able to watch a whole two hour tape at once and not have it broken up into these little chunks. What we do now is uh, uh, we uh, normally serve up about 15 or eight, 8 to 10 minutes of video and then questions. 8 to 10 minutes of questions. The questions have explanations and so on. And in part, that's based on the theory of a book that I just read. The book is called uh, Make, it, Make It Stick. And, and the, the, the idea is that you learn best by learning something and immediately having to recall it. And, and that, that business of recalling it makes it stick. And, uh, and, and I think that really does work. Uh, and it, and it's, it's a great book. I recommend the book if, if you haven't read it. It's a great book. And, but then this guy says, I don't want to have to take the questions. I just want to go uh, uh, two hours at a time. I, I want to sit and, and smoke a cigar and drink a beer and, and watch it. Mm -hmm. and, and so my question is, is, is it something we want to consider? There's only one guy who's ever asked for that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but well. we could put a little switch on it. They could say, I want to watch two hours at a time, or I want to watch it as programmed. That's something. I told them, that's possible we could do that. We'll see. It, it's, yeah. it's very possible yeah. we could do that. It's, it's the way that things used to be, and I, I think that we've gone the right direction away from it, but I, I think we can get back to it. One of the beauties of eight to 10 minutes of video followed by questions is that if you have 15 minutes, you can take a complete lesson, absorb the material, and, and really have accomplished something and, and made progress in your course. And I think the majority of feedback we hear 
is that folks love that because it, we all have busy lives. Many of our customers have uh, wives and kids, and you know they, they can squeeze in 15 minutes. But longer than that, it might be a little bit tougher. Some of them have husbands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, some do. Yeah. I, I just yeah. thought it was politically incorrect. You're, you're right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, okay, uh, by the so. way, I want to mention to you that um, John Dowd will be sending out these press releases uh, along with images uh, behind us to everyone who was on our emailing list about the press conference. So if you did not receive an invitation to the press conference, uh, give John Dowd there at the camera your uh, card and he'll make sure that you get a copy of the press release and the uh, images that go along with it. Now Martha and I are going to struggle very, very hard to let you do this without interference. So take the next page. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try it. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, we partnered, we've been partnering with AOK for many years and, and it's been a wonderful relationship for I'm sure 30 years or, or more of working together with AOPA on, on various initiatives and, and we've been strong advertisers in AOPA and uh, the latest partnership that we have is, is around the drone uh, course and the drone course is really because we have three at King Schools now and the latest one that we just came out with is the drone pilot recurrent course which is, has just the need for it has just developed because it's been about two years since the initial drone uh, pilot certification came out and drone pilots have to recertify every two years so we've come out with a uh, drone recurrent course which normally retails for $59 but in partnership with AOPA we're offering AOPA drone members and actually any any AOPA member that needs a recurrent course the course at uh, only $47 so that, that's our latest, uh, latest element of our partnership with AOK, and we're, we're thrilled to be able to offer the members the really good course and a course that they need at a very good price. And in addition to that one, we also have other uh, courses, including the uh, drone pilot initial course for drone pilots that are just coming into AOK. They have the ability to get that course for $108 instead of the $129 that we offer retail. So, uh, Dirk is here, the Vice President of Marketing for AOPA, and uh, I told him that I'd give him an opportunity to say a couple words. So. I mean, he told me about 30 minutes ago, so yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but first of all, we really appreciate the partnership with King Schools. Uh, the drone uh, team is one of the teams I'm responsible for, and I think it's a really exciting endeavor because we have gained now about 160,000 pilots into the community thanks to the 107 license. Um, and the, they are a little bit different uh, in a sense. Yes, a lot of them actually overlap. Right? We have ten, tens of thousands of pilots that have a man license and uh, one of these, the drone license. Uh, I had to find it, but I do have it. <laughs> um, and we do have to treat them a little bit differently for a couple of reasons. One, they do require a lot more training. Our partnership with the industry, uh, including King Schools, but also, for, for example, Droners IO that is a gig economy network for these pilots that have a 107 license to be able to get jobs, because those are licenses to right. make money in the, in the space. Now, one of the things that we hear from those that are assigning and looking for aerial photography, sensor jobs, is training is incredibly important. And that license is only a small percentage of what uh, these guys and gals actually need in terms of training to be able to execute on the jobs they're getting. So these kind of partnerships, uh, to grow the amount of resources that they have to train are incredibly important. Uh, and I, I think uh, it'll only grow in terms of having the opportunity to train them well, incorporating them into the airspace, and walking them as pilots, because as, as long as we treat them as pilots, we have the influence on making them safer and a better part of the community. If we treat them as outsiders, we will never have that influence. Uh, and again, it's great to have 160,000 more pilots in the door in a matter of 24 months. It's yeah. It's like almost it's a 50% increase in prices from our uh, And we do have plenty of anecdotal evidence that a lot of those people that get the 107 license just get a taste and then they end up getting, getting a man license. course or getting a man license um, or are going to end up in a couple of years uh, operating EV tolls that are knocking at our door and we'll be here in no time as well. 
I personally talked to uh, some number of people around their home airport, Montgomery, who say, well, I'm a new student pilot or so on. Well, how did you get interested? Well, I used to fly drones, and now uh, they, get, they get a taste of the aviation uh, bug, and they, they really get pulled into the community, and that's, that's what we want. It's a huge deal. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Very much appreciated. The next thing I'm going to talk about in Are the, you? I thought it was me. <laughs> uh, apparently it's you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as Barry alluded to, uh, we have a new on-camera instructor, and that is Barry. And um, his, his biggest contribution so far, he had a couple of lessons in the private pilot course. Uh, but he's been a regular now on the instrument pilot course, uh, instrument rating course, the one that we just finished doing. And um, you, you can see him, uh, the image there on the screen is of him teaching about the way the different types of controlled airspace are shown on the IFR in route charts. But uh, Barry, as John said, is our CEO. His background is uh, software programming. He's been with King Schools for 17 years, um, came with us in 02, and he's been uh, typed in the, uh, our Falcon 10 for nine years and regularly flies it uh, with John and me. We just rotate through the seats and, and so on. He is a, um, a, a flight instructor, an advanced and instrument ground instructor, and you've got all of the all of the airplane CFI ratings uh, mm -hmm. on your certificate. Uh, he owns a Debonair and flies that regularly and um, uh, it just is very passionate about aviation, very committed to... Um, did to you mention that he's an ATP? I did not, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, I mentioned he's type rated right, in the right, right. but not that he's an ATP. Oh, well, I thought maybe I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I'll have to tell you that uh, for us, we ask the, the person who is going to be the video instructor, the on-camera instructor, to be the, bad, the last check for quality. We want it to be accurate. We want it to be our, our role in life is to take relatively complicated material and make it clear, simple, and fun. And if someone gets rid of, uh, gets done, not rid of, we're done with one of our lessons, and, 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 and they say, well, that wasn't such a big deal. That was kind of easy and fun. We've done our job. The problem is you don't get credit for being smart if you do that, because they think the material is easy uh, instead of that we made it easy. But that's, I'll take that. If, that's, if they think the material is easy and we made it clear and simple and fun, that's, that's just fine. That's, that's okay with me. Uh, the other thing I can tell you, that if you have a, any hint of self-consciousness consciousness in you, this is tough. Because um, uh, if, if you do something that affects a thou thousands of people, there will be a, th a thousand opinions of you. And they won't all be favorable. And, and so you just you have to be willing to take people not having favorable opinions and so on. It's just, just part of the deal. Also, I have to tell you uh, uh, that the hardest critics of Barry are the other people in the company. The, uh, the video people, and, and they're not going to let him get away with it. Our course, <laughs> our course creation people have no respect for the fact, as they should not, for the fact that Barry is CEO of the company, and they say, okay, sure. you know, step your game up here, yeah, you yeah. need to be a little better on this yeah. lesson, let's and, get a little more energy and, in there. And what we're looking for is clear, simple, and fun. We're looking for playful, we're looking for informal, we're looking for uh, the, the video people to connect, to, 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 that we think we're all friends together, and we are all friends together. And for yeah. the confidence that comes from competence and from knowledge, yeah. which Barry clearly has. So um, Barry is moving in that direction, um, and what happened in the early stages, it just takes more attempts before you get mistake free. You just, you just yeah. You just make a lot of stumbles and mistakes, and so it takes more takes to do it. But as you get uh, good at it, 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 it goes faster and is better. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, 
it's inevitably, the, the future of our company has to be other people on video. Martha's in her 70s. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's your jaw hurt? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> So, so it just so so uh, we're just we're just not going to be able to keep this up forever, um, and it's it's a and I don't I really really like doing it. I I am only reluctantly giving it up. Well, um, you're not really giving it up. You're sharing. Uh, yeah. So part of the. <laughs> no, somebody else gets to do what it means. I don't. Yeah, but part of part of the idea behind this, in addition to planning for the future and have future proofing, I guess, if you want to say it, our, uh, the company is that with Barry uh, being uh, ready, more than willing and able to, uh, to be on the video, it will allow us to produce more courses um, simultaneously and to have someone in the studio teaching when John and I are traveling to places like Sun and Fun, that you Barry is here, of course, but there are times we go to different conventions and so on where, where Barry's not I, with us. I really like doing it, but there can be a sense of confinement yet to show up. And, and, and uh, also, uh, we have a new kind of new philosophy that it just might be interesting to you. We have a couple air traffic controllers who are flight instructors who are writing course material. Former air traffic Former air traffic, air traffic. And they're fun. They're just they're just plain old fun. They're they're interested in, in aviation. They have this background. They're pilots. They know every story known to mankind. You know. I, I think air traffic controllers by nature have kind of quirky personalities. Yeah, they're just fun. It's just it's just a lot of fun. And so what we're now doing is we're taking a flight instructor and we're asking them to look at the lesson. And, and the script is broken into two parts. The right side is the dialogue, what the, what the instructor is going to say on the video. And the left side is graphics, animation, video that's going to support it. And, and so the uh, instructor who, who is going to be the producer director for that lesson will make sure the script is finalized and put the stuff on the left side of the script. And, and then they'll they'll have some meetings uh, with the, like graphics animation. Will this work? Can you get can you do this? Can we get it done in a time we need? And then they do what we call a table read. Is you bring in the the instructor who's ever going to be the on camera instructor, and you sit there and you display to them. Here's what you're going to say. Here's what's going to hear up here behind you when you say it. Say it, and you get it all set up, and then we're going in and shoot it. And and the person who's the fast, last check of the quality is the instructor, uh, the, the video instructor. But the, but the producer, director, what we did is we take flight instructors and train them to be video people. And what, previously what we did is we, we had video people and, and we had flight instructors and handed it off to video people. And, and they, would, they, they would do this switch and the kind of ownership and, and I'm in charge of the quality of it kind of went by the wayside because it would kind of slip between the tracks and uh, cracks between the two of them and so on. So now we take, we've taken a whole bunch, we've got, a, how many flight instructors do we have? Five, something like that? Four. Yeah. Four? Depends on how we work back and pan and cat. Yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, True. And, and, but then they have one, let's say we'll have four flight instructors. Each one of them takes a script and runs it all the way through, owns it, gets another script, picks it up, runs it all the way through. And they get, a, I think, much more sense of pride in that. And so what we're, what we're concerned about, and Martha and I are concerned when we're lying in bed talking about it, all of this, uh, what, we're, what we really want to do is make sure that we connect with people. We really want to make sure uh, that it uh, seems genuine, that it seems authentic, and that we're really connecting with the people, and that they've kind of forgotten that it's on video. It's just someone that's teaching them, and that's what we want to do. And that's and that's the quality we're trying to, to keep on it. And I, and I think we're, we're going to be able to do that. It's just it's really the, the only issue at this point is just the, the rate of production. All right, am I done talking about this? Well, I'll, I'll just add a couple things on, on this page. And, and one is that part of the reason for this, and, and if not the main reason, is that over the last year, I would say year and a half, we've really stepped up our video production department. 
And we, we've hired great people like the former air traffic controllers. Uh, we have a wonderful VP with incredible experience as a pilot and as a uh, video newscaster and who really knows, knows the, um, the business, let's say, of, of producing video and producing it at a fast rate. And so we've increased our, our capability in the studio to the point that we really need more instructors in order to be able to take advantage of the, the capability. So the goal of this really is to produce more content quicker. And uh, so somebody had to step up and, and you know, kind of follow in the, the path of John and Martha. And, and I looked around and, and realized, well, might as well do it myself. And, uh, and, it, and it's been a challenge and a new thing for me and something that I, in, in, it, the easy thing to do would have been to just sit back and, and run the company, which I feel very comfortable doing and I'm enjoying doing, uh, but it's not in my nature to, to sit back and, uh, and just look at it as a new challenge, something that would be fun to do, and, uh, and something that would put me in a position to understand the workings of the company even better. And that's how it's worked out. It's, it's been a challenge to, to um, get to the point where I could get anywhere close to the level of John Barthe in terms of being able to connect well through the camera and, and be able to teach people in a way that is fun and engaging and, and what have you. And, and I would say I'm still at the beginning stages of that, but with John and Martha's health, I, I think there's a there's a future there in being able to uh, deliver that, that level of training. He's probably actually getting more help than he wants. But, uh. <laughs> let, let me add one uh, thing onto that, just in case it's not clear. This is something Barry is adding to his job description. It's not taking him out of the role of CEO. He's adding this to his role as CEO. I, mean, I guess he decided he wasn't busy enough. <laughs> well, it, it's intimidating enough following John and Martha on this path, but uh, when you look at, I, I talked about we've hired a lot in the video production department. I think if you count them right now, uh, with the editors and the uh, video producers that we have, um, there's a total of about 15 Emmy Awards among our staff in the, in the video production department. So these are folks that have a long history of producing video and they really know how to do it well. And they've done it well and they've been awarded uh, for their work in the past. So stepping up there as a, as a newbie uh, who's never been on camera before in front of Emmy Award winning producers, directors, editors, it's, uh, it's pretty intimidating. But, uh, but it's been fun. I've, I've enjoyed it, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future being able to do it better. So, that's All right, it. thank you, Barry. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's a, new, it's a new era in our lives. It really is a new era, and it's a, a, a little tough uh, for us to, to not be the, the only video uh, camera on, on talent to, uh, for video. It's just, a, it's, an era, it's just a new era. All right, so the next step in all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the, the hokey okay. person that is. We have selected a winner for the 2019 Naffy King School Scholarship. Well, I'll get you up there. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, I have to tell you, um, this is one of the most fun things you can ever do. Because uh, we, we, we wanted people that we felt were going to see if I can get the rules here. We wanted someone who was going to make a contribution to the aviation community, uh, a, 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 an important contribution. We wanted someone that, that, that we were going to make a difference for them. Uh, and, and Martha will tell us the other two things that we were going to well, I see you talked about making a contribution to the community and uh, someone for whom we would make a difference. I think those are the two. All right. And and the the we asked them to write essays and Andrea's essay. Her name is Andrea Huisca. That's it. Uh, Garcia. Yes. I'm a slow learner. I'm getting there. Uh, and, and, and she wrote a, a moving essay, just a really touching essay. And it was, it was uh, well done. And, it, and it, I don't know, maybe 30, some people have bubbled to the top. It was, it was really good. And what a, what a privilege and in life of our, uh, it, to, it is uh, to be in, in life around people who do good quality stuff like that. 
It's just, it's just a lot of fun. It was very powerful, very moving for me. So what uh, Andrea gets is about 18,000 bucks worth of value, uh, $5,000 towards hard cash, uh, towards her education, uh, free. Or towards getting either, uh, it, in this case it will be her initial CFI, it could have been for an additional rating on her CFI that Andrea will be using it to get her initial CFI certificate. She gets free lifetime access to every King Schools course, there's over 90 of them, uh, and, and she has flight instructor refresher courses, as you know, uh, the pilots, uh, flight instructors take every two years, she has uh, lifetime access, lifetime access to flight instructor refresher courses. Um, and now let's talk a little bit about Andrea. She's a, a, an avid pilot, over 900 hours, is an advanced and instrument ground instructor, uh, and she'll get, get use the scholarship to get her CFI uh, a airplane <laughs> certificate, uh, uh, and uh, she also intends to get an instrument helicopter certificate, and she's also a, a, a helicopter. She can walk and shoot guns. She's a helicopter pilot. Takes a little And 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 she's a award winning music teacher before A or B A, and it stands before aviation. <laughs> Because what she did, first of all, was uh, teach uh, and learn, her life was, opera. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so uh, Andrea's going to come up now, and she's, she's going to, she will have selected a song at my urging, <laughs> in, in which she's uh, going to sing to us sure. that conveys her feeling about uh, opera and this change in her life. So this is more of a, um, this is a musical theater piece that some people have heard before, probably, is my guess. Um, and this is called Defying Gravity, which is just as you think it is. Um, so Defying Gravity is from the musical Wicked, which um, basically just describes a, about a woman, or a witch, if you will, who is going to change her life. She basically is transforming her life, so it's sort of a little bit of a, a metaphor about what she is doing, basically changing her life, defying gravity, defying what everybody thinks that you should do. So, well, let's hope this works out. It will. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> Something is not the same. I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game. Too late for second guessing. Too late to go back to sleep. It's time to trust my instincts. Close my eyes and leave. It's time to try to find gravity. I know I'll try to find gravity, and they can't pull me down. I'm through accepting limits, because someone says they're so. Some things I cannot change, but till I try, I'll never know. Too long I've been afraid of losing love, I guess I'd lost. And if that was love, it comes at much too high a cost. I think I'll try to find.
Why well, don't you tell you. these folks, Andrea, how you financed your initial uh, flight lessons? Oh, my initial, you know, I um, when I first started, I thought I was smarter, faster, and just, I thought I was going to take my 24000 as a teacher, and in the summer, in those three months I had off, I was going to go get my license. I knew nothing about flying. I had no one in my family that knew anything about flying, and I thought I was going to learn it all. Yeah, that didn't actually happen in <laughs> So I did, um, I mean, I think what everybody else does at the time, I kind of thought I was going to sell my house, and in a year or so, I was going to like be in an airline, right? <laughs> it's not exactly how that went. And then um, the next ones that I had, I've gotten really lucky. Um, I mean, I've done things a lot for the 99s organization, of course, and they have returned the favor in um, helping me with my commercial. Um, they gave me, uh, you know, a, a small one for my commercial, and they also did pay for, there's an Amelia Earhart scholarship for my multi-engine as well. So they did give me that, and then um, now it's been four years later, so I keep going, and like anybody else, like I said, I thought, you know, I was gonna take my $20,000 in my dream, and I was gonna go make things happen. Um, it turns out it's a little slower than you think, it's a little harder than I thought, um, but if you just keep going, it works, and I get really lucky once in a while that I find an organization that helps me along the way, because there's definitely been a lot of times where I think, this is it. Um, I know I've cried many a times on some of them where I'm like, I'm done, I have no more to give. And then somebody comes along and gives me, because, you know, when I'm going, I'm never going to make this CFI thing happen. It's just, everybody says it's a couple grand. I'm like, it's a couple grand just for the test, you know, between <laughs> paying the DPE and for my flight that day is $2,000. So I don't know where these people are saying it's, oh, it'll only cost you like two, three grand. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. I don't, I don't, well, at least it's not how it's working for me. So I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for giving me one more opportunity to finally make this happen. <laughs> so I really appreciate that you guys I, have I given me one how more opportunity. Andrea, you, you and Bob have talked, and Bob is chairman of NAPI, who's the co-sponsor of your scholarship. And Bob, you want to say a few words? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, they bring me up after John and Martha, and then a wonderful voice like that. And I'm up here. I'm Ben Stein. <laughs> Mueller. Mueller. Uh, Andrea personifies something my uh, CFI said when I was working on my uh, flight instructor certificate. Uh, I'm a little bit, uh, it wasn't quite in the same situation, but I was running through cash pretty quickly, and so on the way to, towards it, I remember saying to him, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And Rick, Rick Albrecht, the late Rick Albrecht, my instructor, said, um, you know, if you say it that way, you'll never do it. You'll never get it done. But if you say, I'll figure it out, I'll find a way to do this, then you'll do it. And that personifies it. And the most important part, and this is what I like about being chair of NAFI, and what I love about John and Martha participating, and Barry too, John, everybody at King Schools, uh, participating with us on this is that this is a I can never pay Rick back for everything he's done for me sadly he's no longer with us all I can do to honor his memory and honor the memory of all everybody who's gone before us is pay it forward we have uh, previous scholarship winners here with us today we've got Terry Carbonelli and we've got uh, Pete Terry Martin. you want to stand up so people can see Carbonell, you. right? Carbonell. Carbonell. Did I say Carbonell? Yeah, sorry about that, Carbonell. And uh, Pete Montaigne in the back corner there. And again, it's pay it forward. Aviation is not ours to keep. It's ours to pass on to the next people behind us. And that's what's really important because something that we love, we have to be willing to give. The Kings do it in their teaching. And Andrea's going to do it. And she has done with music. <laughs> well, not just through scholarships, but you're going to make a contribution. You're going to make a significant contribution to the community, and that's a wonderful thing. And that's why I'm really, really proud to be associated with this program on behalf of NAFI. So, Andrea, thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Would Andrea, you like to yes, I would. Yeah, and it really does. Oh, yeah. We have to. Okay, get used to this. You got to do the whole. You got to get the there.
Everybody look at the Airbus one. That's the most important one. <laughs> As chair of NAFI, I don't endorse any airline, any, any airline manufacturer. Oh, no. Well, especially not one with an A in it. <laughs> By the way, uh, John and Martha, uh, since, we had, since we talked about the upgrades on um, the courseware and all that, uh -huh. I have all these VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get, you know, we, we do I still have people. Like, <laughs> one one <laughs> the upgrade to the course. I think it's also along with that, all the courses and package. Uh, every <laughs> course <laughs> You are on the hook for one thing. Yes. Uh, I'd like, we need to get content for the magazine as you're progressing along in this journey. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, in, in case you didn't hear it clearly when Andrea started talking about her uh, initial flight training, she sold her house to pay for her initial flight lessons. Yes. That's, that's it's not homeless. It's not homeless. That's, 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 that's one of the things that caught her eye. You know, this person really wants to do it. What, one other thing that, that was in her resume is, you, how old is your son? He's 16. And you're doing this by yourself? Yeah, yeah. His his dad is limited. So. Uh, his dad is what? I'm sorry. I call him limited. Oh, limited. limited. So that's uh, learning all this stuff and having a young son. Exhausting. I'm impressed. <laughs> and, and, and trying to do all this uh, learning uh, in aviation, but also spend time with your son before he graduates and goes out into right. the side of the world on his own. Yeah, people always say, oh, take this job. You'll be real fast doing this. And like, yeah, I'm going to move across country. That's, yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the just great privileges of being involved in aviation is the people you get to know. Thank you. Uh, and the, you're in that category. It attracts extraordinary people. It's just a delight to them. Well, thank you both for coming. Now we're going to talk about the future. Right. We're going to talk about the future. Right. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. You guys have been yeah. very patient with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. I'm thrilled to add you to the list of very wonderful uh, recipients of our scholarship. So. I'm going to just wrap up. I know we're, we're going a little bit long. And there's not a press release specifically on this, but I wanted to just say a couple things about the future of King Schools and uh, make sure that you're aware of, of the direction that King Schools is heading in. And number one is really to get more, faster, better content out to the market as, as quickly as we can because there, there's a lot of courses that we have, uh, over 90 courses at King Schools. Many of them, well, all of them are still extremely good quality and, and great learning content, but many need updates to HD video that, that uh, a lot of the young learners especially are expecting to see. So we, we need to move faster and we are moving faster. And our focus as a company is to continue that and to be able to not only update all of the rest of the 90 courses that we have, but also to create new content brand new aviation topics and, and be able to bring those to market quickly. So there's a lot of focus in the company on that. And the next one that you'll see that's in the works right now is an update to our commercial ACS course. Well, right now it's a practical test course based on the old practical test standards, which for the commercial that's worked fine for the, the uh, year and a half or so since the commercial ACS has come out. Uh, because for the commercial, it's primarily maneuvers based, there's not a lot of risk management elements that are, that are easily identifiable in the type of uh, maneuvers that you have, but nonetheless, there are, there are some differences and we want to make sure that we continue to get risk management particularly into all of our courses. So we're in the process right now of uh, completely reshooting that practical test course and making it compliant with the current uh, commercial ACS and uh, Martha's finished shooting the, the ground portion of the uh, check ride together with a, a wonderful DPE, the same uh, woman that we've used, Mary Shu, uh, comes down from Washington, very well known DPE, does a wonderful job. We used her for the private and for the instrument ACS courses already, and now she's come down and is working with Martha on a check ride for the uh, commercial course. And we all get this great uh, vicarious view into what the commercial check ride will be like, and uh, and really a model performance uh, from Martha 
And so you can see across all of the tasks that are in the ACS, what, what are the ideal ways to answer the questions that you might receive from your, your DPE? So, so that's going on now. Uh, we're going to be moving on after that to the commercial ground school and test prep course and doing a complete reshoot just like we finished with the instrument course. So we have a lot in the lot in process and, uh, and we believe that we're, we're able to move much, much quicker now with the advances that we've made in the video production department, adding additional uh, video instructors. Uh, we're going to be able to bring those products to market quicker and that's the focus. Um, the other area is we're really trying to grow our flight school and university uh, market and we're, we're having great success and really enjoying the uh, idea of being able to integrate King courses into university curricula. And we see that Liberty University is using our courses and other universities are currently using our courses um, and we're reaching out to more and, and finding very good success because um, a lot of the, the learners that are coming through the university system, they're used to learning in YouTube. They like the idea of video learning. And it gives us a great idea of being able to flip the class, classroom and be able to learn and through you know, the, the King School's lectures at home as well as in the classroom. And the classroom is able to focus a little bit more on the local training environment, the, um, the things that are particular that they want to emphasize, knowing that the students are coming back into the classroom from having gotten a great core and foundation of the knowledge that they need. And so we're looking to continue to grow that and, uh, and putting a lot of effort into it. The uh, last area is just a lot of new technology. We're really, John talked about it, how um, we're, as a company, focused on using technology in the best way possible to support the learning process. And, and we're looking, we all read a lot about um, about new learning techniques and, and what have you, and we're looking to integrate many of those into the course, and especially around the test prep side of things, and ways that we can uh, use artificial intelligence, use other uh, new technologies in order to bring that into the test prep, in order to ensure that customers are able to, in a, in a quick and efficient manner, and in a fun manner, be able to um, absorb the material, ensure that they're ready for their practical uh, or their uh, written exams when they go. And, and we think that there's a lot of room still in that area of bringing new technology to bear. Uh, so, so those are a few uh, items that, that give you a view into what King Schools is thinking about the future and, and where we're headed. So with that, did John and Martha, do you have anything else? No, that you I was going to say thank you guys for thank taking the time. Thank you very much for coming. Thank thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay, so as John mentioned, uh, see John Dowd. If you did not receive an invitation by email for this press conference, make sure you see him so that he gets your email address and can send you the releases and the pictures and, and what have you.